and welcome all to worship as we gather in our Lord's name today. Special welcome to anyone who's joining us online as well. A few announcements to highlight this morning. First, we offer our prayers of gratitude that there was no loss of life during the storms last night, but we remember in our prayers everyone who was affected by the storms. We are in the process of getting ready for Sunday school, so if you have not signed up for Sunday school yet, please do so as we get ready to open. We have our online registration open. It's a happy, joyful time, so please check that out. Also, an update and a thank you for the television project. We've completed that project. The TVs have been donated, and we're in the process of getting those installed now. So let's say thank you for that. Was prompt and thank you for stepping up to that project. Today is the last Sunday that we'll be sponsoring our our monthly project for our global missionaries up through this month of August. So we are grateful for. The Svenningsons in Slovakia, and the Globe Offering continues to go to them today. It is tomato season, and we have a lot of tomatoes that have been brought in to be shared. So please, um, we're, I'm going to keep preaching until the tomatoes are gone. So please take some tomatoes home with you. Those are the announcements I have today, and we give thanks to our musicians who are leading us in worship. If you have the paper bulletin today, we've switched the opening song and the song of the day. So our worship continues with our hymn. Let's stand as we sing.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, bear with one another in love. Maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, and take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have not led a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not acted according to your will. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Forgive us according to the riches of your grace. Make us holy and blameless before you in love so that we might live to praise your glory. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. You who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray together. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2 and 6 through 9. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with what I which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Please read with me responsively Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and And do what is right and speak the truth from their hearts. Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors. In whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by the hope. Who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. I invite the congregation to rise for the reading of the gospel from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, 
they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All of these things come from within, and they defile a person. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you all. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. We certainly need those three things, don't we? Grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, the unmerited gift of God's love. Mercy, an understanding that God does not judge us in the harsh way that we deserve, but instead reaches out with new beginnings, with peace, a calm and trusting spirit that allows us to step out into difficult certain circumstances, but yet to live with lightness and with joy. We certainly know that we need these things, and at the same time, we know that we often do not live up to those things. So in this scripture you hear today from Jesus speaking to the most religious of the religious people, the people who know the scripture and they know the law so well, he is diagnosing our problem, their problem and ours, as if he's a physician who is ready to give difficult news in order that a prescription can come with the remedy. Because Jesus reminds them that we are not the people that we want to be. And he talks about the evil intentions that come from our hearts. And this is the diagnosis. That word is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. And then he has a long list that accuses everyone within the hearing. And it's a big crowd. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All of these things come from within. And they are what defile a person. It's this sweeping list of symptoms that leaves no one unscathed. And so what we have is, in this diagnosis, we have Jesus offering a treatment because the one that they have been using isn't working so well. Because a little bit of background with this washing and this defilement, it may seem like a small detail when the the conversation talks about washing hands and about keeping the tradition of the elders. Now, this isn't just keeping what Deuteronomy says that we heard in the first reading. What has happened is at the time of Jesus, they they called it a fence had been put up around the law. That we know the Ten Commandments, love the Lord God in all your heart. It goes on and on and on. 
And they put up this other set of traditions that are meant to keep people from getting close to breaking the law. And so what has happened is this folly of the human heart, once again, we as people have taken something God gave us as a gift. The law. The law of love, of just living, of fairness. And we've turned it into an obligation and an onerous and heavy task that needs an extra set of gatekeeping. And so the Scripture doesn't really command you to wash hands before every meal, but that tradition has come up. And it's not just a washing, it's a serious washing. So, for instance, if you ever worked at McDonald's and you learned how to wash your hands as a worker, you sing the ABC song twice. And in this last year and a half, we've learned about washing hands. Well, the tradition would have been a comparison. Well, instead, instead of singing that ABC song twice, we're going to sing that ABC song 30 times, and we're going to hold our hands in a specific way. And as we do these things, we're going to remember the law of the Lord. And it has become key to their practice. And you may know some of these stories without recognizing the story behind the story. Anybody remember the wedding at Cana? Jesus turns water into... Yeah. There were six jars that held 30 gallons of water each. Okay, kids, here's your math question. What's six times... What's three times 30? Oh, my goodness. I get nervous even with math. If you have six 30-gallon jars, how many gallons of water is that? There you go. 180. Thank you. Saved me. Those are for washing hands. Ever notice that detail? We've got this wonderful wedding feast, and you have giant containers of water that are for the ceremonial washing. And it's almost as if they're in their physical presence. We have this, this gate toward God's approval. And what does Jesus do? He takes that washing water and he makes it into a gift. In the Gospel of John, that's the first of the signs that Jesus does to reveal who he is and what he's going to be about. This refocusing and this reframing and this retelling of how to answer that diagnosis of that brokenness of the human heart that it's not of us trying to do more things, but leaning back into the gift of Christ doing the work for us. And so this water becomes a symbol. And in this conversation about why do your disciples not wash their hands, as is the tradition of the elders. Now, are you with me? It's not the law. It's not what was written. But it's become the tradition And Jesus uses it as a moment to look at them and to love them and to speak the truth in love. That the way we're doing things is not working. And we know, we long for grace and mercy and peace. And Jesus says, the only way to live in that peace, to go back into the good creation that God made, is for Jesus to bring us in, to refocus that gift. I've been told in times of tremendous stress or tremendous complexity and you're not quite sure what to do, is to take a deep breath and to just stop. You know, we have many teachers and school workers in our congregation. And I know you've had that experience that that group of seventh graders are just going like this. And every teacher at some time will say, okay, everybody just stop. (sighs) Take a deep breath. And let's start over. That's what Jesus is doing. Let's stop. Let's take a deep breath. 
and let's see what the promise is. If you're brave enough, because this great exchange that Jesus is going to give is going to come with some discomfort. Because there is something about that long list that, yeah, we know it may not be the best way of slander and pride and licentiousness and wickedness and adultery and theft and fornication. But there's something about it that feels pretty good to make our own choices and to do things our own way. But Jesus invites us to a great exchange. To take the rags that are ours and to give us the beautiful garments that are His. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 talks about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That's what Jesus gives if we are brave enough. And I say this, not that it's this long list of things we do, but the bravery of faith. The bravery of laying back into the promise and trusting that Jesus is who He says He is, even at that moment of the utmost complexity. An example, yesterday afternoon, went to a funeral in outside of Dimmick of one of my childhood pastors and my wife's childhood pastors, Pastor Al Goldhammer. Just a tremendous influence in our lives. And it was a beautiful funeral. And the bishop preached, and as happens at, at these funerals quite often when a pastor dies, the bishop has been caring for this pastor in his time of death. And Pastor Al had said, in my funeral, you don't need to eulogize me. There are other people there who will do that and will tell my story who know me better than you. And he asked, please just proclaim the gospel, the good news. And then he said, speak about baptism. And it was almost as if the heavens heard, because did they notice it was a stormy day yesterday? Dimmick was right on the edge of that storm. And as she started to preach and talk about baptism, we heard a, saw a flash through the stained glass and a boom. And it was almost, you want to see water? And went on to talk about, in baptism, we die. That we lay back, that we are bound and washed and connected to the death of Jesus so that we may rise in a resurrection like His. And so I say this bravery and this trust and this hope because this image of water, these 180 gallons and all of the washing and the tubs and the pools and the traditions, it's almost as if Jesus is reframing that image of water and taking it into Himself and taking even that fear and that threatening gift of life that comes from water and says, through the dying you will rise to live in the life that I give you. With love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Because Jesus is the living water. And that refocus. So today, brothers and sisters, friends in Christ, today is one of those moments for us to drop the reins, to refocus, and to remember that promise. That this amazing story that creates a road that we are walking is full, full, full of promise. There's a, a minister by the name of Brian McLaren who wrote a tremendous book as a catechism for adults quite a number of years ago. And he called it, We Make the Road by Walking. For these people, for people like you and me, frail, broken, sinful people, who simply have heard the good news that the life comes from, from Jesus and not from us. He says, we make this way 
by walking it. And he describes these stories that we have, these stories of life and death and these stories of water and these stories of healing in this way. He said, after people met Jesus, they started telling wild, inspiring stories, stories full of gritty detail, profound meaning, and audacious hope. They felt their emptiness being filled to overflowing. They watched their lifelong obsession with clean and unclean. Are you hearing that image? Of being washed was replaced by super abundant, super celebrative joy. They felt their anxiety and paranoia fade, and in place, faith and courage grew. And they are given the gift that we are still given of a new imagination. Because imagine if you take your imagination that is no longer formed by that brokenness of heart that leads us down the wrong path, but our imagination and our hope for the future and our way to engage with the world is formed and shaped by this watery gift of life that Jesus brings. And suddenly we're rising up, as we say in the baptismal service when we baptize babies or children or adults, in an invitation to live and serve God in ways of peace and justice and to love the world that God made. And so we tell the story again and again and again. We drop the reins and we hear the story and we even surround ourselves with the story. Uh, Look at our windows. The story of water. Take a look over here. I'm not pointing at you guys. I'm pointing behind you. Pointing is kind of rude. That second window That's Christmas of a star and of a manger. But look underneath it. It's the flow of water. What a beautiful artistic image that the artist gave us. And it continues to flow into the next panel of Jesus being baptized. And the water going on Jesus and the dove descending and the Spirit of God sending him out. And that becomes this whole ministry. And then the rest of the windows focus on a week. We move into Palm Sunday and you see the water is still there. Of us and our celebration waving our palm branches. And it blows through the window of creation into Monday, Thursday. And the Last Supper. And Jesus saying, given and shed for you. And the river flows through the cross of Good Friday and death. And the water flows to Easter and then to Pentecost. These same imaginative stories of being regrounded, and it's not about us following the law perfectly and getting everything right, but an invitation that we are entering into the flow of this love, peace, and mercy. And unfortunately, our back windows are so high that very few of us can see them. So I tried to take a picture of them. You'll see it's two panels. And I invite you, when you go out today, look way up high. They're beautiful. Because it's as if this flow suddenly becomes the Sea of Galilee. And you back up one more, David. We've got the boat with the net in the water. And it's the invitation to go and make disciples. From now on, you won't be fishing for fish. You'll be fishing for people where Jesus has taken fishermen and laborers and men and women and called them all together and put them into the work, into this giant flow. And then now the next one, the other panel that goes with it. It's not a very good picture. I tried to do my best, but it's hard to take a picture into the sun. It shows Jesus with the world and an image of that last day when all will hear and all will be invited into a new way of being. And then we fly across to this, of the presence of Christ in bread and wine and the heavenly host in that last call where in fulfillment, Jesus speaks to us. 
that good news that was proclaimed at the funeral yesterday, that is proclaimed in Mark, it's proclaimed whenever we gather, that the life we live comes from our Lord Jesus, from His death and from His resurrection and from laying ourselves back into that flow, a great, grand story where you and I are key to it bringing our own set of skills and talents that we may be a witness for a broken and tired world again and again and again. So grace, mercy, and peace. You hear it again and again and again because we have been graced God has reached out to us through Jesus. We have been mercy. Uh, The Creator of the universe looked at us and judged us righteous through faith. And we have been peaced so that we can live with calm and trust as we go about our piece of this lake, of this Sea of Galilee, of our bit of casting the net in our home or our neighborhood or our workplace or wherever wherever we are. So brothers and sisters, congratulations and welcome to the story. Even in the midst of the storm that shakes us and frightens us and sometimes makes our phone vibrate and ring, we step out in faith. Because God is good to us and to the world. Amen. Let's sing about that water in this next hymn. I invite the congregation to please rise, and with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace. If you are not comfortable shaking hands, you can give a sign of peace to your neighbors. As you return to your seats, we will gather our morning's offering. the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's good things. Holy God, you grace your people with gifts of love, mercy, and hope. We pray that you would make that grace visible in our care of neighbor, that you would surround us, Lord, in your mercy. You created the earth and all that is in us. Provide for all that you have made and make us good stewards, Lord, in your mercy. You breathed life into the first humans and you continue to believe, breathe life into your, into us. By your Spirit, renew all people, that all nations may be at peace. We pray especially for those places that long for peace, Lord, in your mercy. Clothe with your love all those in need, the poor, the malnourished, the exhausted, the injured, 
the disabled, those in need of constant care, the lonely, the afraid. We remember before you those we carry on our hearts today. We pray for Doug DeYoung, Mike Westall, Gene and Jamie Jellen, Fred Tiedemann, Kevin Roth, Janice Mirmo, and Gloria Buchelman. Lord, in your mercy. Your light shines through the saints of all ages, comfort the grieving, and gather us all at your feast that has no end. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you are near to us when we cry out to you. Into your embrace we commend all for whom we pray, trusting Christ by the power of your Spirit in the words that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. We will sing together. God is good, and all the time, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.